In this video, we're gonna discuss recording with effects and without latency in Cakewalk by BandLab and other doors. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So recently I was contacted by one of my viewers, Adam Waters. He'd been watching a video on another channel called Home Music Studio One and Dave over there was explaining how you can record your vocals with real-time effects like reverb without any latency and without the need for any special hardware. So Adam asked if I could make a video about how we can do this in Cakewalk by BandLab. Now I've slightly adapted the method and the good news is it's so simple, it's really nothing more than a quick tip. But I will also explain Dave's method as well. That could be useful if you're using another door or indeed it could be useful at times in Cakewalk as well. Now before we get stuck in, if you do like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plugin reviews, that kind of thing, please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos. So I wanna start off by quickly talking about what you're hearing right now. Of course, it's my voice going through this microphone. Now I have a feature on my audio interface called Direct Monitor. That enables me to hear the sound of this microphone without the sound being processed by my computer or cakewalk at all. Now you almost certainly have that feature on your audio interface as well. It may be called something slightly different, but almost all of them have that feature now, even the budget uh, or interfaces. Now I can't tell you how to turn it on exactly because it's different on each audio interface, so you'll need to look that up. Now maybe you already know, and in which case you'll know what the problems are are associated with that because there's really only three methods available to me to add a nice reverb to this sound while I'm singing and that can really help me get in the right mood while I'm singing. The first is to have an audio interface with DSP effects on board. That means there's effects on the audio interface, it's processing them and you can record the sound to the computer. It doesn't have to process anything at all and that means that there's no issues with that. Unfortunately, those audio interfaces tend to be a lot more expensive Expensive, and I know that most of you don't have an audio interface with those features on. The second method is to use something like an effects unit, an effects rack, and set up an effects loop on your audio interface. That way you can have the effects sound coming through your headphones and you don't have to record it to your DAW. But again, requires special hardware, needs you to have specific features on your audio interface. So the third method is to add that effect using a plugin in your DAW, in this case, Cake walk by BandLab. So let's have a look at the problem let's have a look at that now and the problems involved with that. So I have a, a project set up here. I've already got my track set up here for my vocals to record. I've selected the input which is the microphone which I'm talking through and if I click on the record button here you can see the meters move up and down uh, with my voice talking. Now of course I want to add the plug-in here so that I can hear a nice reverb but that means I'm going to have to hear the audio uh, after after the computer has actually processed it. In order to do that, I have to switch on this button here, which is the input echo button, could be called something slightly different on another door, but it's called input echo here. Now I'm gonna switch that on in a moment and you're gonna hear a problem right away. So I'll switch it on. And, and you, you could, could hear now that there's this strange delay sound, almost a chorus sound to my vocals. That's being caused by latency. I'll switch it off because it's so off-putting. So latency is caused by the fact that the audio has to be processed by the computer. It finished processes it, processing it, it sends it back to the audio interface and then back to my headphones where it's mixed back with the original sound. And it's really an off-putting sound when you're singing especially. Maybe when you're playing, say, electric guitar and you're using an amp sim, you can get away with it then if you can get that latency down low enough with your settings. But if you're a vocalist, it's almost always irritating to have the sound that latency in your headphones. It's a really simple fix though. I'm gonna show you that now. So I'll go over to my effects rack here in Cakewalk. I'll click on the plus button. I'll go to insert audio effects. I'll go up to the folder Cakewalk and then I'll go across to or down to the Sonatus Reverb. This is a free reverb which comes with Cakewalk. Now you could use just about any reverb. The most important thing is you have to have some sort of mix control on there. In this particular plugin, there's three sliders for the mix, one for dry and the other two are for the different types of reverb. We're only interested in the dry slider here. If you're using a different reverb, you'll probably have just a dry, wet mix knob on there. 
almost all of them do. I don't think I've ever come across one that doesn't have it. Just make sure that you switch that all the way over to wet, so you're only hearing the wet signal, the reverb. So on this plugin, I'm just gonna drag my dry signal all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm gonna switch on my effects rack and I'm gonna make sure that I have uh, my reverb effect switched on as well, which I just switched it off for some reason. So that's on. Now let's switch on the input echo again. And now we can hear my voice with a nice pleasant reverb without that awful delay which we had before. It's really as simple as that. And I can go ahead and change the different aspects of the reverb. I'll make it really, really big here. So I'm in a nice big hall. I'll turn it back down. So that's a really, really easy method for adding in your reverb. It's a little bit difficult, I suppose, a little bit fiddly to mix it in. You have to kind of drag these down if you just want it to be very slight, for example, but it's not too bad, okay? I told you it was a quick tip. So let's look at um, Dave's original method and see how that differs. For his method, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, uh, create another track exactly the same. So I'm actually gonna do this in Cakewalk by right clicking and going to duplicate track. I'll leave everything ticked there and I'll click OK. So now, now we have a duplicate track. And what we're gonna do is add that reverb effect into that second track there, okay? So I'll insert audio effects, cakewalk, go down to sonatus reverb, and I'll insert the reverb effect. Again, I'm gonna make sure that the dry uh, blend is all the way down there, okay? So I'm not hearing the dry signal at all. Now what I'm gonna do is arm my first track for record, okay? Obviously, I can hear my dry signal with my direct monitoring. And with the second track, I don't need to arm it for recording. I'm just going to switch on input echo. And again, we have that nice reverb effect there. Okay, so we've had to create two channels with this method. The slight advantage to this is if you're going to be recording a lot of tracks and you can just set this up once, have it there with the reverb and you don't have to keep adding the effect in if you've got multiple vocal tracks. That's one advantage and you also might find it a little bit easier with this method um, if we have the console on here, then I can just use the console faders to blend that reverb in and out so I can just easily use the faders on my console to make adjustments to the amount of reverb I have in the signal. Then we're using it a little bit like a sort of a send or a bus. So really that is the whole effect. That's the effect with the awful delay on it. That is the whole effect. That's the whole methodology. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you did like it, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you do like this kind of content. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I also have a Patreon account available now. There'll be a link for that down in the description and I'll see you in the next video.